Hello and welcome. I hope you're safe and well. Today's exciting episode is about Chanel suits. I just make myself Chanel jackets, but almost every video where I make a jacket, people ask, yeah, but what about skirts and suits? So here we go. A whole video about Chanel style suits and what to think about when you want to make one for yourself. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. Okay, so there's loads of inspiration picks and also I'll just sort of tell you the basics and what I would do if I was going to make myself a suit and yeah, the sort of things that you have to think of. So first of all, I get a lot of people asking, is there one specific pattern that you use for the whole suit? I would say absolutely not. You can, if you go to simplicity.com, they do have several um, patterns that are like for a suit or um, if you go to women's then coordinates then you, it'll come up with lots of business attire and there's like usually a jacket in there as well as so this is simplicity.com and they always have different sales so just write down the number of the patterns you like and then wait a week or two and it'll be on sale um, but yeah so I've got a mix of coordinates and jacket patterns here but personally I would recommend um, jacket patterns and then a separate skirt pattern and that way you get something that suits your body rather than just having to make do with whatever they had also you usually they usually have two patterns for this or five patterns for that so it doesn't really work out cheaper to just buy one pattern anyway and I would definitely make a mock-up or a toile because you really need it to fit properly. And the other thing I would say is um, when you make a, when you buy a bespoke suit, like a men's suit, the ones that cost like $6,000, what they get is a completely fitted jacket and two pairs of trousers that match. So if you're absolutely obsessed with the idea of a suit and you want it to last, you know, a decade or more, I would definitely, definitely recommend um, making, getting enough fabric, so 10 metres of fabric or 10 yards of fabric, and that way you can make a jacket, you can make two, either two different skirts or two of the same skirt, and that way they'll all age the same way because a skirt or trousers have to be dry cleaned. They have to be washed much more than a jacket because a jacket, obviously, you wear several layers underneath it, then you put the jacket on. Whereas a skirt, you can accidentally sit in something, you can accidentally spill something on you. I don't think people spill as much on their jackets personally. People always ask me, would I make one? No, personally not. I always wear my jacket with jeans and a t-shirt. But I mean, each their own. I would, um, I, if you have never made a tweed jacket before, I would definitely make a jacket first and then make a skirt out of like a different wool or like see how all these fabrics go together. I'm making jackets out of each of them. But if I was forced to make a skirt, that, that um, a suit, I would make a jacquard in a suit and I would make the um, the sequin, I would make a spare skirt out of that as well. And then I would wear those two skirts with all four of these jackets. So I, yeah, I'm not into matchy-matchy. I, I, I guess, I don't know, if, if you never wore a school uniform that was a wool skirt and a blazer, then I mean, I guess maybe then you don't hate them as much as the rest of us. But I don't know, it just reminds me of high school having to wear a, a wool skirt, freeze your ass off in a school, in a, in a wool skirt and a blazer all day, every day. So, but each their own. So now I'm just showing you a couple of different tweeds. So, yeah. Um, also, yeah, I would wear probably, I would make a loud jacket but then like a plain skirt I think they're really nice or again you can do like a um a, just try it in a different fabric this site type of fabric often comes in a navy colored so yeah I'm I I'm not sure like 
in the 60s, people didn't really have heating in their houses as much as they do now and public buildings and places that you go to. Like if you're going to the opera or the theatre and you're going to freeze for like hours on end, then I understand why you want a silk lined wool, heavy wool dress plus a silk lined heavy wool jacket plus a silk lined heavy wool coat over the top. You know, you do need those layers, especially in the times where women of a certain um, social rank weren't really allowed to wear trousers either. So I understand that. But yeah, I don't know. Um, I do think you have to consider the temperature of the places that you're going to be like a lot of people ask me should I make a skirt or a dress to go under my jacket I would definitely definitely recommend oh this is the jacquard with the flowers on it that I talked about in the floral inspo video you have a bunch of summer weddings that you're going to then a big flowy coat over a plain shift dress in matching in the same fabric but in like a sort of cotton based jacquard is um it's breathable it's easy to dry clean so i would consider that it i mean it depends on your purpose if it's a business meeting one then you really can't go wrong with navy blue like you can wear navy blue to you know christenings weddings funerals so i would yeah plain navy blue it's you can't wear black to a wedding but navy blue is fine and yeah um now I'm just showing you a range of tweeds and sequin fabrics and the jacquard and again I would probably make the um oh you can't see the oh I'm definitely making coats out of all these but you could use the jacquard to make a plain skirt or a pleated skirt and it would go, well, it would go with the lighter ones for sure. And they'd be really summery. And then you could have a plain grey tweed or a plain, I've got a steel grey sequin fabric, mini sequin fabric. And I would just make a skirt out of that. But I mean, it depends what sort of, what your style is. You could get a just a plain charcoal grey wool and that'd be really beautiful. I mean, it just sort of depends what you want. And I think you also have to remember that you're completely different to a model from the 1960s. So it's not, if you make the exact same thing that you see in a picture, it's never going to look the same on you because we live in a completely different world now. And also, yeah, so just sort of like this, I love how bright and sunshiny it is. This one, I love the olive and there's like each photo that I've, I've take, got in here, like I like them for different reasons. Some of them, they just look chic, but also sunshiny. And, you know, I've got a French tweed that's white and gold and cream and well, like this looks bright and sunshiny too, but it's, it's completely different. But what I liked about the other pictures is what I like about that t tweed. So Linton Tweeds in the UK have an online store for tweeds and Mood Fabrics have really good, pretty good quality and reasonable price tweeds as well. And some of the um, Etsy has some nice tweeds, although I had an absolute nightmare the one time I bought from Etsy. It took four months for the tweeds to arrive, but they are nice tweeds. So if you like to gamble, maybe that's an option. I don't know. It might be better now. That was way back in 2020. Or you can go to, um, it, whenever you're in a big city, go to any like the fabric center or the fashion district and any store that says European designer t um, fabrics, they will probably have some really nice tweeds. If you're nice to the people at the who work there, they'll show you the pretty stuff. And again, these ones, I'm personally making jackets out of all four of them. Two of them are already jackets, two of them aren't. But if I wanted a skirt that matched all four of these things, I would buy more of that mini sequin fabric. It's actually less cost less than the tweeds anyway and it would wear better and to make the actual skirt well if you haven't seen my jacket making videos basically when you make a jacket you out of tweed so that it doesn't sag you put a structural layer of netting in there but when you're making a uh, trousers or a skirt you can't do that because netting um has to it 
the point of using netting is that it makes it stiff and it your jacket holds its shape. You don't want that for trousers or a dress or a skirt. What you do is you buy just a little, the same amount of tweed that you have, buy the same again in quilting cotton or a little bit more, pre-wash it so that it shrinks down to the correct size. And then from then on, it will be dry clean only. When it's made up into a skirt, it'll be dry clean only. So you take your tweed, you cut out the skirt pieces, you take your quilting fabric cotton you cut out the same pieces and you stitch them together you interline them together and that way your tweed skirt won't sag because the cotton is there to hold it up and then the lining you make out of silk so that you can get it on and off and it doesn't sort of pucker and gather weirdly and make you look frumpy and bulky when you're wearing it and when you're walking in it and also another thing to think about, if you're going to bead or add trim to your jacket at all, you you obviously can't do that to the skirt. So the skirt is going to be plain or the trousers are going to be plain. And you just have to think about how that's going to coordinate. Is it going to match like my jackets are <laughs> very, very bling because I'm using up my massive bead collection. Like this tweed looks completely different with beads on to without. Like it's sort of mostly teal and olive and um, a sort of antique gold. And this one here, this is what the actual tweed looks like. This is a Mark Jacobs tweed. And this is what it looks like once it's beaded. It's like completely different so just think about that as well I know that's probably not a, a problem for everyone but yeah and other things I would think about are like is uh, if you live in a mild climate like around the equator or something yeah is are you mostly going to wear it in summery conditions or are you mostly going to wear it in wintry conditions I think that will str like even if you like pencil skirts but there's the winter is like really long where you live. Is a pencil skirt really going to work for you? Because I remember when I was in high school, <laughs> the winter pleated, long uh, pleated skirts were way more warm than just this plain sort of pencil skirt ones. Another thing to think about is actually being able to sit down in it. So um, tweed is... It's a difficult fabric to work with. I love it and I think it works well as a jacket, a structured jacket that has a netting base, but I personally would never wear it as a skirt or trousers or anything like that. It's just, in my opinion, that's not what it's designed for and it's the... You, I would wear a harder wearing fabric, like denim jeans are perfect for me, but that's just me. What I do notice about lots of photos from the 1960s when people are wearing vintage um, Chanel suits is they often lean on a seat rather than sit down. So if you do love a pencil skirt, just make sure that you can actually sit down in it. And if you do intend to wear it in winter when we all tend to eat a little bit more to put on more body fat so that we aren't as cold, just think about, um, yeah, how you're going to sit in it and where you're, like we each put on weight in different areas. So just think about what it's going to look like on your, you know, snuggest <laughs> snuggest days and what it's going to look like when you're not bloated and just sort of think about that as well like I mean if you some people just depending on the time of the month they just retain so much more water and you just get so bloated around you know so maybe make a size six skirt and a size eight skirt or you know two different size skirts and that way you can wear when you feel like wearing the baggy one I always do that. I buy things in a couple of different sizes and that way when I want to wear something extra baggy, I can wear that. And when I want to wear something that doesn't quite fall off when I'm wearing it, then I wear the other size. I also get asked a lot if there's a formula, like should your jacket be oversized and your skirt be oversized? Um, if you want it to look vintage, then I would sort of where your belly button is, I would say that's where your vintage style jacket should end. It will feel too short, but if you go back and look at photos 
of the old jackets they are actually quite short if you want something that looks very 1980s or end of last century then I would go for a jacket that goes down below your like down to your hips and sort of emphasizes like big shoulder pads big full button hips and um if that's the look that you want personally I think the most flattering look is um a cropped so just above just above your belly button I guess if if we're going to yeah if that's easy to measure just put your hand there and look in the mirror um there with long sleeves and then a straight or a pleated skirt it looks really flattering it just lengthens your whole figure I know some people don't like wearing a cropped jacket but just go to the store and try one on and just look in the mirror and see how much more flattering it is than having extra layers of uh, coat and jacket over your hips it just streamlines your figure so much especially if you put on a pair of heeled boots it makes you look tall and thin and yeah so but I mean just go with whatever's comfortable for you but you do have to think about the sort of shoes you will wear with it because in if you're wearing the same thing from top to bottom, people are going to look at your ankles because it's the only thing that isn't like if you're a big cloud of one color, people are going to look at the bottom half of your legs. So, yeah, you sort of have to think about whether you want that to happen or not, I guess. And what sort of shoes will make will um sort of make the look if you get what I mean. I think if I had to make suits for myself I'd just make a bunch of jackets and a bunch of skirts and I wouldn't wear ever wear the same tweed together I'd just mix them around you know if you've got like five bikinis you just wear them different tops with different bottoms I think I'd do that and I'd use the leftover tweed to make handbags and then wear a different handbag as well so you'd have one tweed on the handbag one tweed on the jacket one tweed on the skirt oh it would be so clashing and fabulous anyway i hope this has helped so again if you're making a jacket interline it with netting and line it with silk but if you're making a skirt trousers or a dress i would uh, i personally think the skirt is the best of those three options and i would interline it or flatline it with a pre-washed cotton quilting cotton so just a really sturdy cotton and just stitch them together and that way it wouldn't sag and I would line it with pure silk 100% silk and yeah I would definitely make two skirts to, for each to go with each jacket because that way it will age well and also you can always take one to the dry cleaner and still have a whole suit to wear so that's about it thank you very much for watching oh versace this is christian dior it's a dress and a coat over the top i think that's a good combo for weddings and you know formal events sort of thing rather than the jacket and skirt but i don't know now I kind of want to make one. I, I definitely want to make sequin skirts. I think they'll be awesome. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you, oh, of course, my favorite jacket pattern is Vogue 7975. And uh, if you want something easier, the Birda 6123 is really good um, tweed jacket pattern if you're just starting out and I've done a couple of videos on that one as well so thanks again for watching happy sewing and if you do have any other questions that I haven't answered I feel like I've answered them all but if you do have any more just pop them down below and I will endeavor to answer them for you happy sewing